Okay, hi everyone. This is Ron McKinney with Parada Photo uh, doing another one of our webinars. This time we're gonna focus on color powder and I'm going to show you um, how I do it here in my studio. But more importantly, I'm also gonna show you how you can do it outdoors because I know not everyone has the luxury of having you know, a large studio like I do. And the important thing is for you to figure out how to do these things. Um, and so that's what we're gonna do today. Um, uh, for those of you who don't know me, um, I have a photography studio here in uh, the Northwest suburbs of Chicago. Um, it's a very large studio. Uh, it's like in an industrial warehouse setting. And so it just allows me the freedom to do these kind of shoots right here in my studio. And that way I do them three times a year. Um, each time I do like 10 days of rain sessions followed by 10 days of color powder each time covering two weekends. And, um, you know, I try to think of uh, color powder and, uh, and my rain sessions as being like high end volume, you know, that I want to bring in as many people as possible, but I'm not going to charge them, you know, like a small amount, like I, you know, like, like, like I would with a, a volume shoot. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a little thing that I just kind of threw together. It's just about a minute and a half long, something like that. And, uh, and if, if I'm, uh, if I'm not, sharing it correctly, please let me know in the chat. And as I'm going through this, uh, please feel free to uh, ask questions in the chat and I'll be monitoring that. So I'm gonna start off with this one right here. Here we go. Keep an eye over here on see if any questions are coming through. That kind of gives you just like a little sample of, uh, of uh, you know, how it looks on behind the scenes and, um, and then, you know, how the finished images look. Um, and um, one thing I want to drive home is that there's, you know, like a lot of photographers are not very um, open to letting moms or whatever take pictures during their photo shoots. And, and uh, to be honest, uh, it doesn't matter what shoot I'm doing. I always encourage them to do it. And all I do is I ask them, you know, post it on social media, just be sure to tag me. Um, and it's especially true here with the, uh, with the color powder, you know, because the truth is, you know, that they're not trying to get the shot that I'm going to get, they can't do it. And, and, um, and, and but, 
you know, like if they get this shot and they talk about how fun it was and they can see how fun it was and they talk about, oh, I can't wait to see the finished images. Um, and then they share it in all their social circles. It kind of opens me up to places that I normally can't get access to, you know, with my own marketing. And there's nothing, nothing better than word of mouth, you know, especially when they see the video and they see, wow, this is really unique, you know. So I, I just highly encourage everyone to, uh, um, to allow people to take pictures behind the scenes of these, encourage them to do it. It's free marketing. Um, so now I, I, I'm going to uh, uh, show a quick video of me just um, like uh, kind of like talking about uh, uh, the color powder. So you can see some of this here. So we're gonna switch over to this next one. Right. Here, here we go. And that's the wrong one. That's not the wrong one. It's... Yeah, this is what I knew was gonna happen. I was gonna be confused with all these videos that I've got set up here. So I'm gonna stop the share and figure out where we are again sorry about that i was trying to get this organized before the shoot but it's kind of like hard like like what i'm doing is picking this one and then sharing it but now i have to find it in here so i'm going to move them over move them over here it is right here okay so i'm going to actually start it um about right here it's just going to go for a few minutes now easy you know um, you know, because of the way the lighting work, it draws attention to it. Whereas if it's firm, like it is right here, you know, behind me right now. Oh, this, this, this is me talking about how I changed my shooting from when I started in 2020, 22. So I'm going to move it back to business. Bit. And so that's what I did. And it's been phenomenally su successful since I've done that. Um, and, uh, but you know, like each time, you know, that I, I, I complete like a 10 day session, I usually like, like give it like 10 days, you know, two weekends. And um, uh, I, I look back and I try to decide what really worked, what, what's new that I really liked. And, and then I, I uh, you know, also determine, you know, what didn't work and I try to make changes. So like the way that I shot back in the summer of 2020 compared to how I'm shooting now, just two years later, uh, it, it's phenomenally different, you know, for example, my backdrop, if you take a look at my early pictures, I didn't really, it didn't bother me that my backdrop was drooping and, and uh, yet, you know, like look at it now and it really drives me crazy, you know, um, you know, because of the way the lighting work, it draws attention to it. Whereas if it's firm, like it is right here, you know, behind me right now, um, you're just going to see the colors that I throw on it. And uh, that's it. And th that's kind of like the way I start is I, I'll throw colors onto my backdrop even before my first person gets here. Because I just, I, I don't, I like this as a colorful shoot, you know? And I think one of the key things um, for you to watch as you look at that is how slow I am. And you'll see me standing, you know, like right virtually in front of the camera. Sometimes I'm blocking the dancer uh, during this, but I, I, that's because the camera is right in line with, you know, where I'm gonna be sitting to do the shot. and when I look at them, I like to look at them from the angle that I'm gonna be shooting them. And I often will have them like do the same thing more than once because I look at different body parts. I look to see where their face is gonna go on the shoot or you know what their arms are doing, what their legs are doing. Um, I, I, I don't like to try to figure it all out at once. So I kind of like just focus on one part of the body at a time. And then I really try to figure out, okay, how can we make the powder work because this is totally different and then I have them practice it you know before we do the shoot because I want I I I, I want to try to get it in one shot I, I don't want to throw color powder after color powder after color powder and just waste a lot and get a lot up in the environment I'd rather slow down and get it in one shot if I can do it um you know I I, I think I say in the workshop that I give them three times and it's actually pretty rare that I let them have three uh, three shots with the color powder, you know, and the other thing, you know, I kind of mentioned it's, it's, I mentioned as one of my tricks is that, uh, you know, I'll have them like, like if they're doing a leap or something or, or virtually anything where, where the powder is being thrown, I, I will shoot more shots. And it's because like, 
um, it, there's not just one shot for the color powder. If they're throwing it, okay, great. Now you've thrown it and you've captured the color powder going out. But uh, then there's also um, the idea that now the color powder is going to settle, or maybe there's going to be a cloud. Sometimes it rises. And, and as you continue to get shots, it, it'll look different, and you can incorporate those you know, in your shots, in your editing. Uh, so like if they're doing a leap, for example, I'll have them do the leap, throw the powder, then they settle down, and then I'll have them do it again, sometimes two more times, just because it's a different look. And if they're in a static pose, then I'll, I'll shoot, and I'll just tell them, hold it, hold it, you know, and I'll, I'll just keep catch, you know, shoot, add, add a few more every time I see that there's a significant change in the color powder behind them, because there'll be like this uh, big old cloud or something like that behind them. And that's always interesting, you know, and it's not like I'm trying to get one shot. I'm sometimes like uh, I'm pulling parts of different shots and putting them all together in one when I do my post-processing in Photoshop. So what I'm planning to do now is, uh, is create a blog on, on the Potato website on the education page, you know, dedicated to the color powder. And I'm going to have, you know, all these different uh, videos that I've created over the last year or so on it in one blog, you know, so you can see me talking about it there if you want to. Um, you'll see, uh, um, you know, like there's a, I have a 34 minute video of me just doing a complete shoot, you know, I'll show a little bit of it today, but obviously we don't want to spend the entire 34 minutes just watching me, you know, uh, uh, do this here, but, but it'll be pretty fascinating, I think, to be able to, you know, like, like just see it, um, see me how I'm doing that um, with a dancer. And, you know, like, to me, um, one of the key things of getting this right, you kind of heard me talk about it there at the very end of that video there, is having them shoot a uh, or have them do the thing a couple of different times or I keep shooting even after they've thrown the powder, you know, because for one, sometimes the powder blocks the light. And then on the second shot, I get their light, their, their, their face lit up. And, um, and then I, I pull that and I use that face in the shot. Um, <laughs> another thing that's always kind of fun too, is like, like one thing I never do is correct uh, arms and legs or something like if, if a foot is sickled or something, you, you know, I, I'm not going to correct that you know, like they have to be able to get it right, you know, in camera in terms of their technique. Um, but with color powder, if something goes wrong, <laughs> let's just throw some color powder over it and boom, it's, you know, you can't see what went wrong there. So that's always kind of a nice thing to do. Okay, um, Chris is saying um, two lights, main and fill only. I'll, I'll kind of be going over that in a little bit. When I'm inside my studio, I actually have two lights on the side, two lights 45 degrees back coming in, and then one light overhead. And so it's, it's those back two lights and the overhead light that I use every shot, those three for sure. And then occasionally I use the side lights, you know, if they're turned, especially if they're turned like a little bit more towards the camera or something like that. Um, so, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll be kind of talking about that a little bit. Okay, so what I want to do now is go ahead and bring up um, uh, some, some images and you kind of see what they look like, like coming out of Lightroom. So they're not straight out of camera or anything, but, but it, it's, it's, you know, I, I do a lot of work in Lightroom. So it's, it's not like it's anywhere near straight out of camera. Terry's asking if, if I use fast lights in. And so I, I use uh, Einstein's for this. Uh, it has a, um, a very short duration flash, which is you know important you know for this sort of thing and for um, for dance in general. So I typically use Einstein's. Uh, I also have the Paul C. Buff links. Um, I just don't use those as much. I haven't really incorporated those you know into my shoots. I use them when I'm doing one shoot, and I have another photographer shooting next to me. Um, not, not color powder, um, but uh, the Einsteins are, are known for their short duration flash, and so that's why I like to use those. So I'm going to pull up now some images here. Um, here we go, share screen, and we are going to pull this up right here. There we go. And so, um, 
this is the final image of this shot here. And, uh, but this is, you know, like how it came out in terms of Lightroom. And I've already done some work down on the, uh, um, I, I use, well, oftentimes what I'll do is I'll use Lightroom to select subject. And if there's not a lot of powder on them or so, Lightroom does a pretty good job of that. Once the powder gets on them or they're dark and they blend into the back, the black background or something like that, then it's a little bit tougher. But, you know, Lightroom does a pretty good job of selecting the subject. And then I inverse it and, um, and focus on, you know, the backdrop and just adding a lot of contrast and clarity. Um, I use another brush down on the flooring and, and, and that way I can kind of like change the color a little bit. Um, the brushes are pretty good. I can work around the people. You can't really tell that I've done anything on here. Um, but then, you know, after I'm done with Photoshop, you know, I typically add more, you know, powder. Um, I'm sometimes pulling it from an earlier shot that they've already done, but I also keep um, a lot of overlays, color powder overlays. Like anytime I do this, I would take this right here and I would, I would uh, turn it into a color powder overlay and I put it somewhere. So, you know, and I usually make it a bunch of different colors. And, uh, and, and then I can just pull it in and put it into any shot that I want to do, because it's, it's possible that this girl here, it's, it's actually quite probable um, that she may not even throw in that powder, that, that original powder that we saw. Well, no, that came out of Lightroom. So yeah, she did throw that. That's right, she did, I remember. Yeah, so, but you know, like a lot of times you're gonna see some in here where, you know, in fact, here we go, I think, uh, no, nope, it wasn't this shot, but one of these shots, we actually uh, started, it, it was, we, we didn't use the color powder. And, and it was actually this shot here. Um, you can see her here. Um, I actually, this is like, okay, she threw the color powder and then she, then I actually had her throw it a second time. And then I had her do the same pose, you know, without throwing the color powder. And, and if you take a look at these two shots here, you can see here, this, this thing up here, um, that it's combined with this one here, going over here, and together they come out to be like this right here, okay? And as you can see, this is like a, the cloud of powder that was settling, you know, after the shot. So, you know, if you look over here at these two right here, there's no cloud of powder there. And I decided not to use all this powder that she kicked up with her foot here because I wanted her foot to be seen. So I just, you know, kept it exactly like that right there. So I'm going to pop over just to see if anyone has any questions. Um, <laughs> Larry says he's going to have to drag his M600s out. Okay, we're going to keep going. Um, yeah, here's the next image I just want to show. Um, again, it's a situation where I can't get this mouse. To, there we go. Okay, so um, so now on this one here, you know, uh, I was okay with the blue that was behind her, but I thought it was kind of boring, you know, with the way the red went up. She did a good job, like throwing it. I just didn't get the angel wings that. I, I like to get out of that. So, so what I did is I added that to the shot. And the other thing to look at as well is if you notice um, between her hand and the powder that's going above, her face is not completely lit here, you know, um, when she's throwing the powder. And so again, if you remember, I had them do it again and I saw this one and it was like, ah, oh, that face is perfect. And so I pulled that face and put it onto here, you know, and then added, you know, these angel wings right here. On my, um, when I create this blog, you know, we may take a look at it today, you know, if we have enough time, but I have screen recordings of me doing the complete editing from Lightroom all the way through Photoshop of uh, some images that I've edited. And, and, and sometimes I spend up to 30 minutes editing an image you know, if it's going to be something that's going to be like portfolio worthy. But most of the time, I try to edit the images in just a couple of minutes so I can move on because, you know, while it is 
like high end volume, it's still volume. And, and so I don't want to spend too much time on those. Okay, so here's the next one that we're going to look at. And, and so you can see like um, the powder is okay. You know, we've got the hair flying and it's in her face. And, and so I actually had her do, she, she actually did a different leap. And on this one, um, I, I didn't like the powder at all. You know, the way it works, it was just a right there, but look at her face. And so I took that face and worked on this image you know, and came up with this right here so we can actually see her face in the image. Um, another one that I, you know, that seems to be kind of a popular one is this is the starting point right here. And, and that is like, it's just like, uh, just letting the powder just like fall out of the hand. And what I do is they just get in this position and they just let it start falling. And I just keep shooting boom, 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 boom. Cause I never know which one it is that I'm gonna end up liking in terms of the powder. And then sometimes I just build the powder and just you know, create this right here. And then I threw in a cloud in the backdrop, you know, just to make it a little bit more dramatic. I can see some questions are popping up. So I'm gonna take a look at those before I go on to the next one. I see some things are in Q and A. Um, so Jan is asking, uh, she, she put it in a q and I wanna try everybody, I'd like everybody to ask our questions in chat because it's easier for me to just follow one of them than, rather than both of these. But she asked um, how you set up in the cleaning after process. And, and the answer to that is, is yes, I will be. And it's, it's pretty simple. Uh, um, I, because I have this large studio, I, I actually put a, a um, plastic sheeting, it's like a vinyl tarp, it's, it's really thin plastic sheeting that, goes from the top of the ceiling all the way down. And so no color powder comes back here to this viewing area, which would be a huge mess if a lot of powder came back here. All the powder stays in that area. I've taken everything out. So when I'm done, all I need to do is vacuum and mop and, and uh, you know, it really didn't even take that much. I usually hire somebody to do it for me just because I don't wanna mess with it. Um, you know, so it cost me a couple hundred dollars to, you know, get somebody to clean it, but that way I don't have to mess with it. But I just use a shop vac on that and it works perfectly. Um, so Donald is asking about my powders and in, in the, sh in the shutter speed, um, how many shots for a single action. And, you know, I'm shooting with, with the studio strobe, so I'm only shooting one time. Um, and uh, the color powder that I use, largely speaking, is chameleon colors. Um, uh, those are, uh, you know, very good powder. Um, you know, it, it, it's got like a bunch of different colors. And that's a beauty of it. When, when you order these things, I order the five pound bags and, you know, and of the most popular ones, the reds, the blues, the yellows, the pinks, um, I'm sure a couple others, you know, I always make sure I have two or three five pound bags of those. And then the less popular ones, you know, teal is pretty popular as well. Um, you know, I may only have one and then I just kind of watch to see how it goes. But I'm going to show you guys how, um, how I use a lot of powder, but I use it very efficiently. So I'm not wasting a lot of powder. And that's a really important thing. So just to clarify, Donald, my shutter speed is one two hundredth of a second. Um, and the important thing is the duration flash on the uh, on, on the lights because it's it's all black the duration flash just pops out there and and um, and because the Einsteins are really good about that it it works out really well let me jump over to the chat to see oh there's a looks like a whole bunch of questions may have popped up um, I shoot in raw Thomas um, and Natalie, cat's out of the bag for the perfect dust throw, gets angel wings, exactly. And the thing is, like, like not everybody can get those angel wings, you know. Sometimes they do, you know. Like, the first time I nailed it, it was just like this little 10-year-old girl who just, just nailed it, and it was crazy. Um, you know, and, and so what I do is I, I, I just create all these overlays. So if they don't nail it, then I don't have to worry about it. Ron's asking, uh, looks like you have a lot of powder overlays that match exactly to the image you're adding to. Where did you get them? Or do the overlay you saved over the years? So, so Ron, I, I, uh, 
I do. I, every time I do these shoots um, and I see a really cool new throw or it's a little bit different or whatever, I, I create an overlay and, uh, and I turn it into a PNG file. So it's transparent, except for just the part that I want. And uh, so I can very quickly add anything, you know, to my images and, and uh, uh, probably, uh, you know, at some point in time in the next year or two, I'll probably offer those for sale. First, I got to finish the, uh, the, the dance poses. Um, holy cow, got to work on that first and then we can work on that. Uh, Pamela is saying leg hold with powder. I know, pretty cool, huh? Um, they, and, you know, the thing about that is, is you, they, a lot of times they want to do something crazy. And it's like, you don't have to do anything crazy. Do something you know, and then we'll add the powder and some crazy lighting, and it'll look really good. Uh, Chris is saying discussion about the powder itself, where to get it, toxic. To, these, these are, um, it, it's, it's uh, uh, cornstarch based. So, you know, I'm not too worried about it. I've never had anyone complain about it in terms of, of how it's affecting them, how it uh, stained their Leo, nothing. I've never had any, any uh, concerns about it. And the effects on my lights, it's a really good question. You'll see in a little while that I put this, these uh, big plastic clear um, bags over my lights. But the truth is I've done it for a long time without even doing that. And it, and it just never affected my light. Maybe I'm lucky. I don't know. I, I beat up my equipment. I'm, um, you know, like if somebody came and saw how I handled my equipment, they'd probably laugh, but I, I hardly ever had to change it out. It, they, they work for me. My, my equipment loves me. <laughs> um, so it works out all, all the well. Um, chameleon, like C-H-A-M, E L E O N and then colors. Um, so just do command colors, do a Google search for that and you'll find them. Um, and so, you know, Paula, yes, yes. I, I eventually will sell the, the, the overlays. Um, I'm not sure yet whether I'll create some brushes or not, but, but definitely the overlays. I, the, the overlays are really what, what worked for me. Um, Pamela is saying, do you have everyone sign additional waiver injury asthma concerns, clothing staining, and not respond. No, I don't. You know, like I, I, I warn everyone about it, but I also tell them that I've never had a single complaint. Um, and so, you know, I'm just, you know, that, that's just not a concern that, that I have because of that. Um, you know, like, like uh, I, I keep my room, you know, pretty well ventilated. If you're doing these outdoors, it's even less of a concern. Um, but I keep, keep my uh, space pretty well ventilated. I have a door open, generally speaking, and, and a fan going to, you know, like circulate everything out. Uh, may I ask the output of your three main lights? Is it near full or half? It's, it's, um, it's kind of hard to describe. Um, but on the Einstein, you know, you've got like uh, on the far left, you've got the numbers going from one to I think 256. And it, it kind of varies but they're usually like around four to eight or something like that. So, so it's pretty high. Um, um, and, and, and yeah, they're largely the same output. Um, you know, and you know, you just, you, when I show this next video, you'll kind of see, you know, how I'm doing the shoot. So, you know, you'll understand it a little bit better, I think. Yeah, so really <laughs> excited to talk about images 5487. Oh yeah, that's Anne, that's gonna be fun. Um, okay, okay, logistically clean up. So Ron, you know, like the thing is, is that it, in today's world, you can't use a bar of soap anymore in your bathrooms. And so I have this like liquid thing, but it's, it's not very effective at getting that, getting it off of their skin. And I explain that to them. I say, just go home, take a shower, use a bar of soap, boom, comes off, it's no problem. <laughs> but go ahead and go in the bathroom and try at least do a little bit. And, and they do. And it, it comes off somewhat, but, uh, um, um, but that's about it. Okay, Pam is a dance coach, can help with poses. I'm particular about technique. Okay, that's cool. Good. That's, that's it's, it, you know, like, like it's really important. When you see how I do this, you're going to see that not only am I talking to them about technique, but... I'm actually teaching them how to throw the powder because it doesn't really matter if they get the technique perfect and you know, and they, they, they're not getting the powder right. It, it's, it's just not going to turn out to be an effective shot. What kind of ground cover do you use? A very good question, Gen Z. Um, that, that is plastic sheeting down there. It's like, uh, I wanna say four or six mil. Um, 
um, plastic sheeting, and uh, it, you know, it's a, it's it's a roughly it's a uh, about a 16 by 20 foot area there, and then below that, because I have the concrete floors, are cheer mats. So if they do slip or something and fall, they're landing on a cheer mat. Um, um, and then I have a black backdrop in the background. And you know, the beauty of doing the outdoor shots is you don't have to have a, a backdrop. So there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna show this next video now. And, um, and let's see, here we go. You are a screen. Oh, 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 we need to show these pictures of Anne. Yeah, I can't do that. So, so here, here's this, you know, a shot I got of Anne. You know, she's kind of amazing. She's a dancer with Martha Graham. She's going into her ninth season there, but uh, she lives here in Chicago. So we often get together and do some shoots. Um, but the key thing is, okay, so here is like, I put this on Instagram and re everybody really loved it because, you know, of, of the entire explosion of color powder. And that's the thing, like when you're dealing with somebody who really knows their body and knows how to use their body, they can make all this color powder work in ways that, you know, like, like if you're dealing with a six-year-old kid, you know, <laughs> we just, they just throw the powder. They have no idea what's going on. Um, but with Anne, what, what you're going to see here is the blue powder that you, that, that it looks blue here. You'll see later, it's not actually blue. Um, but that's, that's a, a, um, a pile of, of powder that I had on the flooring that her right foot kicked through. Okay. And then you can see on her left hand, you can see the red powder and that's what threw the red over there. And you can't really tell on her right hand, but that's what's throwing the, the yellowish, uh, the yellowish orangish powder, you know, in the other direction behind her and then in front of her. And she does a spinning move here. It, you know, just does a great job kicking the powder as she goes into her position and look at her hair, man. I didn't even touch that hair. This thing is there's no powder added to this shot. There is very little editing done to the shot. This is all land, just nailing it. Am I putting the lights in the right place and, you know, just getting the timing right on the shot. But uh, I want to show you like, like, like this is how it looks coming straight out of Lightroom. And you can see, remember how, well, I haven't really talked about it yet, but the, the, the powder that's down here on the floor, the, right now it looks orange, but the, that's because I worked it. This is actually what the color is of the powder that's down here on the floor. And, um, and, and, you know, and I wanted to make it another color. I didn't want to accept the fact that it was just going to be this nondescript color. So I went back and I, and I, I uh, create, you know, like, like dupe the, dupe, dupe the engine image in Lightroom and then just made everything blue, okay? And then I pulled it into Photoshop, both layers, and I just pulled in, you know, that part of the blue that I wanted, you know, to help create, you know, this image right here. So, yeah, thanks, Natalie. It is, it was, this, this was fun. Okay, so now I am going to show, uh, this is my 34 minute video, and obviously we can't like do the whole 34. So I'm gonna kind of like, uh, uh, just show you like the, um, the beginning of, of, of when, you know, this person comes in to do the shoot with me so you can see what we talk about. And then I'm going to um, just show parts of like maybe one of her shots or something, because otherwise it'll take way too long. But the whole 34 minute video will be on the blog, you know, in the, on, on the Potida website. And for those of you who are not part of our Potida Facebook group, um, I really encourage you to join our Facebook group. Um, we, you know, we talk about all sorts of things like this. We share information, you know, it's all free. Um, we've got our conference coming up, uh, July 21 to 23, 2023 here in Chicago. Um, so, if, you know, we're, I'm going to be doing a workshop on, not on color powder, but on rain, um, on the day after the color or the conference ends. Okay, so now I'm going to go show you this other video and hopefully I can find it. Um, so it's going to be this one here. Right here. Okay. Is it? Yeah, perfect. Okay, here we go. And this is the very beginning. So I'm just going to like, here it is. This is how we hey, start. Ron McKinney, um, getting ready to do a, a, a color powder photo shoot with Caitlin. 
Um, Caitlin, have you ever done a color powder photo shoot with me before? No, this is my first time. Oh, cool. Are you excited? Very excited. Good, good. Have you been uh, like watching me post things on Instagram and things like that with color powder? Of course, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so did you also go to my website and take a look at my, um, at my color powder pictures to get an idea for what you want to do today? Okay, so there are some things that you have in mind now that you want to do. Is that correct? Perfect. Okay. And did you stretch? Yes, stretch the floor. Okay, cool. So you're all set and ready to go? All ready. Okay, come on in. Here we go. Lights out. Okay. So this is our setup now, and uh, we're getting ready to do this shoot with, uh, with Caitlin. Um, I always keep lights on here at all times. Oftentimes I have a younger dancer and the parents are here. And at this point in time, I talk to them about how I encourage them to take pictures, you know, behind the scene pictures uh, or video of the shoot and I actually want them to post it on social media and, uh, and tag me, of course. It's my best way of getting free marketing. It's, it's really kind of amazing. That, that's what it does is gets me to new circles that I haven't actually had access to. Hey everyone, so this is my color powder table. And as you can see, I have a lot of color powder. Um, I use a, a lot of commission colors um, and uh, so I, and, I, and I keep, I use these five pound bags and I have a lot of them because, you know, my point is, is that if you're going to do color powder, I want them to have the options of having virtually any color they could possibly want. Um, you don't have to have this many, but with as much color powder shoots as I do, you know, it, it's, it's uh, you know, kind of like my option to, to offer all of these different colors. So they're virtually all here. Uh, one of the first things that I do, if you take a look at Caitlin here, is that her Leo is completely black. And um, if you swing around over here, uh, you can see my backdrop. And you can see that I've already added some colors to my backdrop. I don't like things to be pure black. And so I've got that there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some color onto Caitlin. Okay, so what I do is I add two colors and I ask you know, the dancer, I say, what two colors would you like me to put on you? And so what colors would you like? Uh, teal, and teal and purple. Okay, so I have two different colors of purple. I'm going to go with a darker purple here, and then this teal right here. So what I want you to do is pull your hair back, and then close your eyes and just put your arm out. And when I do this, I, I literally get just a little pinch like this. And from back here, I just like just throw it onto them. And so now we're going to do purple keeping your eyes closed. And I, I kind of put it all over to them. I just want, uh, like, like even on their arms and stuff. That's pretty good. And that is how we start. The truth is that, you know, once we've done a few shots, the, the uh, colors will kind of like blend into their black Leo. You won't see it as well, but it's actually a good way of getting started. Okay, so um, the, the next step that I do is uh, I, I find out from the dancer what, what they're going to do. And I often have them repeat it over and over because I want to watch their feet, their hands, and their face. Uh, their face needs to be lit. And, um, and then their hands I'm going to be looking at to see how they're going to throw the color powder, if at all. And then their feet, um, if they're going to if they're going to sweep their feet or kick it or anything, I'm, I'm going to have them like sweep some uh, color powder. And I'll actually, I'll actually like sweep up a pile there for them to go through. And if if you you can see down here that the that the powder that's down here is actually like a nondescript color. And um, and what I do is in Lightroom, I then turn that into any color that I want. That's why I'm not concerned about what color this is. So in a moment, you're going to see us um, um, working on the pose, okay? This is just, you know, like what my setup looks. You, you can barely see my light up there in the top and then the two lights on the side and two lights over there. And then I keep everything lit with continuous lighting so they can shoot video. 
Okay, so um, one of the things, we, if you notice when we came in, we had a huge tarp. If you can swing around and kind of see the tarp over here to the side, and you can see how I blocked off the rest of, uh, of my studio with this tarp that's going from ceiling to floor. And that protects, that keeps all the color powder um, uh, in this area. Okay, so another thing that you can tell is that I shoot tethered to this TV. So when I take a picture of the dancer, it, you know, they're immediately going to be able to see the image right here onto the TV and we can make any changes that we need to make. Um, um, I try to limit them to throwing the powder uh, just one time if possible for, I don't want to waste the powder. It creates a lot of powder up in the air. And, um, and uh, you, know, you know, that's the main thing is I just don't want to waste it because if you don't manage this carefully, they could end up throwing it 10 times. Think about how many times you do a studio shot where um, you're not even doing powder, but you often will do it eight or 10 times to get things perfect. Well, in color powder, we try to get perfect, but it's not always going to be perfect. And the thing is, we don't just want to keep throwing and throwing and throwing. So we try to nail it the first time. You're going to see me um, practice it, um, uh, practice it with her until we have it down pat. Now, as you're going to swing around to me over here, one of the things that I do is open up my door and I turn on this fan. And I now am ventilating the room. So that way the powder has a place to go and it's just not gonna hang here in the air and drop down to the floor. A lot of it will go out the, out the door and will stay somewhat ventilated. Um, I often occasionally will use this leaf blower, blow, it over into this area and that works pretty well as well and trying to manage you know the powder that's going to be into this space okay so now we're going to get started okay and uh we're gonna do our very first one you can see exactly how i work with her on this so caitlin what is your first pose okay very good now if you saw her, she, she leaned back and took her arms back like this. So what I see then is I see her holding the powder like this and just leaning back and just throwing it like this. And so you did it very slowly, but we need to do it a little bit faster, you know, to get, get a good spread on the powder. Okay, so let's do it again. Now, if you noticed, her face goes this direction here. So what that means is I'm gonna turn on this light over here, 90 degrees to the camera and lighting her face. I'm then only gonna use these other two lights at 45 degrees behind her lighting the powder. And then my other overhead light up on top from slightly behind her. Um, and that's how I'm gonna light her. I don't always, use both these lights. I just want to light the direction of the face. Okay, so let's look at it again. Okay, so now what I want you to do is practice holding it like this and then going out for the release. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so we are ready for your first one. Here's another key thing that I tell them is I don't want them to go and get little handfuls and they barely throw any powder out. Remember, I'm trying to keep from wasting powder, but I do that by minimizing how many times they throw it. But what I do want them to do is go over there and get two big old handfuls. So it's like falling out of your hand and that's how much. So if you're standing there and it's like falling down, that's what I want, okay? So go ahead and you can pick out two different colors or it can be the same color, whatever you prefer. So I'm gonna turn this light on now. Uh, okay.
Okay, so now I am shooting at um, one two hundredth of a second f six three with an ISO of around four hundred, which is the way that I figured it with the light that I've got going on here. And uh, the other thing is, she's going to be standing there and waiting for me to say that I'm ready. Okay, so get in position, and I'll tell you when I'm ready. And I'm ready. Okay, now, if you notice, she changed the way that she shot that. In other words, she looked at me instead of looking over to the side the way that she did it beforehand. And that happens a lot. You know, they sometimes forget, oh, I'm supposed to look at the camera, but we actually don't want them looking at the camera because we want to do side lighting as much as possible. And so what we do now is we analyze this shot and we say, okay, so here we are, and the other thing that I can see too is that you can see these huge blobs here, and that means she held on to them, you know, till the end, and then let go of them up there. And so one of the things you kind of have to teach them because they've never done this before, and so you have to teach them is um, is how to do it. Okay. So in this case here, what you want to do is when you're in this position here, you'll want to release right here, release right here and then bring it up. Now, if you release before you move, it'll fall down. But if you release as you're lifting, then it'll spread out, okay? So that's what you wanna do there. And then you wanna be looking off that way, just like you did before, your hair off your right shoulder. Uh, it can be down uh, a little bit on your left shoulder if you want, but it doesn't matter. That's totally your call. Okay, okay, two big handfuls. Even more than you grabbed last time. Okay, wait till I'm ready. You're gonna be looking back at the light. Get your arms down where I want them. Okay, good, and I'm ready. Beautiful. Okay, now you're gonna see a difference in these shots. If you notice, I continue to shoot even afterwards, and that's because I wanna get what the powder looks like um, even after we've done the shot. So, you know, because I may pull this powder and use it, but watch how this one looks now. There's the release and you can see what a better job it was. That, you know, those are getting to be more like the angel wings that we're looking for. That's an awesome shot. We just Okay, so <laughs> let me just see what kind of questions are out there. Um, you know, I, I shared my settings there, 1200, F63, ISO 400. It's gonna be like somewhere in, in, uh, in that area. Um, Natalie is asking how tall and wide is your set? Um, the, my backdrop is 13 feet high um, and we're 20 feet wide. And then I have around, mm, I wanna say 16 to 18 feet in depth you know, where, where the cheer mats are and where, where the flooring is. Um, so that, that's, that's my space inside. Um, Larry's asking what I'm, do, what I'm doing for video. I have uh, my uh, studio coordinator actually just uh, shooting this with, with my iPhone. Um, can you move the cursor so we can see the floor? Sorry, Liz. <laughs> um, can, can you move the video? Con oh, I'm sorry. Huh, I didn't know anything about that. Okay, how many poses do you usually do with each dancer? Melissa, that's a great question. I, 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 um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stop sharing so you can see me here. Um, so I, uh, I have two packages that I offer and um, one of them is a two JPEG package and the other one's a five JPEG package. Um, and the two JPEG package is 195. The five JPEG package is 295. And then I typically shoot, you know, depending on how much time I have, three poses for the two JPEG package and six poses for the other one. I'll even do another one. And sometimes I throw in a, like, like, a, like a, a headshot with color all over their face and stuff. And um, with the idea, number one, the number one thing, is I want them to love the two that they're going to get or the five that they're going to get. They have to love them, okay? 
And then if they love all three or six or seven or whatever it is, great, you know, then they can add on if they want to. That's the beauty of it. So I, I you know, when I put the viewing gallery together, you know, they, they're going to get all the different poses, the ones that I like or whatever, you know, plus any extra ones that we get. And, and then they have the option of buying, you know, adding on, you know, to their package. Um, so that, that's an answer to that. When they're moving around and getting warm, the sweaty hands cause issue with the powder clumping. You, you know, actually, I, I, sometimes I like the powder clumping. Um, it it kind of like you, you get all that, that stuff going, but I've, I don't know, I've never really had an issue with, uh, with sweaty hands. I live in Chicago. It doesn't get hot here. People think it gets hot, but huh, I'm from Arizona and New Mexico and California. It doesn't get hot here. Um, and um, so let's see. Um, just move you down. When I'm moving around, yeah, okay. And cool, thanks. Okay, is it a preference to have them look off camera? Is there another reason? So that's a great question, Melissa. Um, the lighting is more dramatic when you can go from side to side, okay? What happens is, when, when, when you shoot from the front, you know, it, it kind of like, it kind of like lights everything a little bit, you know, you, you're not able to control it as much as you can when it's coming from the sides. Um, so I like the dramatic lighting from the sides. And so I, I do, I, I try to tell them, let's, let's do as much, you know, that's, uh, you know, that, that's a profile as much as possible. But if they're doing something where they're facing the camera, you know, I'm going to go with it. You know, some of my best shots have come with them facing the camera. You know, so it's, it's, it's really not that big of a deal. Uh, does the plastic affect your lights in terms of overheating as well as for quality of light? The key thing for that, Wendy, is, is to not have your uh, model lights on, which I did one time. It didn't work out too well. Um, and uh, so and in terms of quality of light, no, no, it's not going to. I mean, you know, if you really think about it, there's powder in the air. You know, this is not like a studio shoot, you know, um, um, but it's, it's still, it's, I mean, it's, it's pristine. It looks really well. So I, I, I've never seen it be affected like that. Oh, Trevor, such a great question. What lens and focal length are you shooting at? And, 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 and so here's the deal. I'm going to put up another video of me shooting outdoors. And when I first shot outdoors, I thought, great, I can shoot with my 70 to 200. How fun. And so I got way back there and, 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 and shot, shot it, you know, I don't, I don't think I was all the way at 200, but as soon as I was doing it, I was going, oh, no, no, no. I really like these powder shots with, 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 with a shorter lens. And, and so um, I'm using my 24 to 70, you know, here in the studio, and I'm usually shooting right around 60 or so, uh, 60, 60 millimeter. Uh, if you go really wide, what happens, like if you're shooting at 24 or even wider than that, what happens is it makes the background come down even smaller. You don't want that, you know, so 60 or so works really well for me. That's what I like, you know, but the thing is, there's no one way of doing these things. You know, everybody finds the way that they want to do it. But when I did shoot outdoors, I did find, oh, oh, oh no, I like it. I like it at 2470. Um, Wendy, I get the vinyl, you know, over at Home Depot. Um, I buy 100 foot rolls of it at 20 feet wide. And, um, and it costs, it used to, you know, pre, you know, like the very first time I did it, you know, right when COVID hit, I think I was getting it for like 68 to $60 or something. But lately, it's been like 110. <laughs> I know the iPhone's awesome. Um, what exactly do you say it's under the tarp, a, uh, a cheer mat? And, and so I think it's one and five eighths inch thickness. It's, it's the more thicker one. Um, they're not inexpensive, but you know, they're, it, it's easy. I move them here, I move them there. You know, it, it works really well. I use them here for my studio when I'm not doing color powder. How long is each shoot? Great question, Gretchen. So my five JPEG package, I give them 30 minutes. My two JPEG package, I give them 15 minutes, but oftentimes we just schedule them for 30. Um, and so that's it, you know, and I think of each shot as taking five minutes with color powder. With rain, I can do them much, much faster, of course, but with color powder, because of all the instruction that I have to give them and the practice that we have to do before I take that shot, you know, it's five minutes per shot 
five minutes per pose. What about people that take screenshots of the gallery instead of purchasing? Mm, the gallery's unedited. It's 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 watermarked. I don't watermark a lot of my stuff, but I watermark you know these things here, um, and I tell them you know please don't do that. And you know for whatever reason, I don't think it happens a lot. It happens some, of course, but I'm just not going to stress about it. I don't have time. Um, and my sales are quite good. See, they're, they prepay the package. So it's already paid for, you know, when they get the gallery. The whole thing with the gallery is there's picking which ones they want and possibly adding on some, hopefully. And many of them do. Uh, no, absolutely not, Wendy. I, I, I don't edit those. I, I, what, what I do is I do a Lightroom batch edit, you know, so I give it a little bit of punch and stuff. And that is it, you know, and I, I just tell them, keep the faith, man. They see all my images. They know that what, what they see in the gallery is not what the finished image is going to be because they're so used to seeing my 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 work. Uh, thanks, Larry. Okay, good. Yep. Okay, package prices include the session or is it? No, no. It's 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 two ninety five for the five JPEGs in the session. And oh, and then I didn't clarify after that. What I'm really trying to do is I sell groups of four or more, and um, that's when friends come in. And, and so I, I tell them they, they get a um, they get a, a discount to 175 and 275 plus they get a free social media uh, a JPEG of a group shot of, of them. And uh, and then with teams, um, I say it's got to be at least 10 and um, and uh, they get it at um, 245 and 145. OK, and then they get the free, you know group group shot at their team shot as well and I, I get entire high school teams in here entire dance companies gymnastics teams you know and so it's like I, I I'm, I'm, I'm working all day you know and and, and uh, you know the revenue that I'm going to drive is going to be like around you know for an entire team like 3,000 or something like that for you know having fun and doing creative shots and and it's 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 more boutique in other words it's not like okay we're just going to do 500 images you know or whatever it's 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 one every five minutes or so. So let's see. Um, do you always link to the TV as you're shooting? Yes, I do, Natalie. It's very important for them to see immediately what it looks like um, to, so we can make any corrections that we need to do and also to confirm that, okay, it's good. Let's move on to the next pose. And also when, they're, when the parents are shooting video, they'll shoot video of, of them doing their thing and then swing over and say, wow, look what it looks like when, in, you know, in Ron's camera, you know, before any editing has happened. And, and I love it. I say, yes, please do that. Get it out there. Kiata, how long is a typical session with three to six poses? Uh, kind of, you know, just went over that. The, the two JPEG one is 15 and five is uh, 30 minutes. Um, okay. Um, and I, I answered that, Ying Chin. Um, I, I tried it. I didn't like it. 35 more messages. Wow, there's a lot of questions, huh? Okay, so I'll try and go, go through these pretty quick. Some cool portrait sessions, 85, sure, okay. Uh, Pamela, did you say three, three images for, no, it's two for 195 and five for 295. I just do that many, I do the three and the six as a minimum for the poses. And, you know, you have to decide, like, that's my, that's my rate, you know what I mean? Like, you have to decide what works for you. And I'm really happy with that. I think if I went higher, I wouldn't do as much. And, and I, I, I want to keep them coming in. You know, like I said, I, I, I can make quite a bit of money um, if a lot of people sign up. Uh, how would you like to lift faces when they look to the front? And, and so I'm going to move those lights that were over here to the side, you know, at 90 degrees, and I'm going to move one of them up to be like 45 degrees. So I, I still get some shadow. Do you have a dancer is back to back? So there's co. Oh, yeah. So trust me. Yeah. Yeah. They, they love seeing each other coming in and out. And sometimes, you know, like if somebody's here, I'll, especially the rain sessions, because I don't have that big tarp there. I'll say, yeah, come in and watch, you know, um, and, and, and so they're always watching. And uh, Wendy, another question about the session fee. And um, there we go. Let's see. Oh, okay. That's it. Okay. And is that a TV monitor or a commu computer monitor? It's a 55 inch TV monitor. So, okay. Now I'm going to show you one more video. And this is going to be of uh, an outdoor session that I did. Okay. So, what I did is I wanted to know that I could do an outdoor session without a back backdrop because that's the key thing to me. I think setting up a backdrop and worrying about the wind and stuff like that. 
what a mess. Who wants to do that? The, the thing is, you guys have to do this at night anyway. And so what happens is if you control the light and shoot the lights from the sides and from, and, and from the back, um, none of the lights is going you know, back behind the dancer. And so there's a, an easy fall off of light and it looks really amazing. Um, and, and, and so it worked out just like what I thought it would. And then, you know, I actually did it just in the back alley behind my, um, behind my studio. So all I had to do was just like take some, take my water hose and just wash it all off and it was gone. I mean, my cleanup was five minutes for that part of it. Um, you know, and I, I do think like if you do it outdoors in nature, then, um, you know, you want to just be able to wash it down or something. I, I would think, you know, just to, so you don't leave this huge, big, colorful blob there. Um, Another thing to think about too is like if you're doing it on grass, they're going to sink into it, and you know it's going to be harder to see their feet. And what I think you can do is go to go to Home Depot or something, get one of those four by eight boards, those little thin ones, you know, not like a plywood, but just a little thin one, and because uh, it's easier to handle, it's not as heavy, and you just put that down and and uh, you know put a bunch of powder on it or whatever, and and I think it'll look pretty cool. So that that's what I would suggest so let me go ahead and show this other one now let's see this is going to be my outdoor one and trying to figure out where i put it quick time that's not it that's not it that's not it oh this is it okay here we go all right now I have to move all these other ones out of the way and bring this one up. Is it here? Yeah, here we go. Okay, so let's just watch this. This is what was already in, you know, like for those of you who are in the Facebook group, you've already seen this, but now you can, you know, those of you who are not in the Facebook group, you haven't seen it or whatever. So I want to show it to you. It's just, uh, just less than three minutes long. So here we go. Okay, hey everyone. Um, just wanted to let you know that I'm gonna, you know, you guys are all familiar with my uh, color powder shoots indoors. But now I've decided to take it outdoors without any backdrop whatsoever, um, just to show you that it can be done. And so we're going to be doing a test shoot tonight. We've got uh, three wonderful dancers over here with me. A fourth is going to join me in just a little while. And uh, we're just going to have some fun out here. It's actually right behind my studio. So my plan is, I, I, know, I know most of you, you know, won't have that, but that way I can just like clean it up, sweep it up, blow it up, whatever. And it'll all be clean, you know, in the short time after we're done. But I'm really excited to do this in a setup like this to show that you guys can do it as well. Okay, so the very first shot, I just use cross lighting slightly behind the dancer and coming across. And now, um, uh, Kendra, go ahead and show us what you're going to do here. You can see what Kendra is going to do here. And you can see that her face is coming forward. I want to light her face. So I'm going to be adding this light here. Now you're going to see what the difference of how it looks. This is going to light up the background just a little bit, you know, but with a little bit of Photoshop, you can clean it all up. Okay, so right here, you can see my entire setup. You can see Kendra set up, ready to go. I've got the front light up there, and then the two side lights. Uh, I've got my powder table off to the left. And, uh, and you can kind of see like there's some things in the background there, which, you know, those poles back there that this light will pick up. But um, it's not gonna be too bad, an easy Photoshop job. A lot of you won't have anything like that in your background. I think if you just had like nothing behind there, the light will just fall off and there won't be a problem at all. I am ready.
Okay. So that last image was killer, wasn't it? And that, that was like a one and done shot, you know, and, and you know, but the thing is I spend the time to show them. Sometimes you have to tell them about which way their wrist is gonna go, you, you, you know, as they're, as they're throwing it like this as opposed to like that. And, and um, you know, and if they're facing me, I, you know, I talk about, okay, you can do this. You can start out here and then throw it this way. Um, and, um, and then there's one more that I do as well. Oh, then, then of course the angel wings. So those are the three that they're doing that they're facing towards me. Um, but you know, if you, if you just show them how to do it, oftentimes they just boom, just nail it, especially if they're pretty good. So, you know, that worked out really well. Um, let me see about any other questions. If you do the thin board on grass, would you still use a cheer mat? No, because you know, you're on grass and it's gonna be a little bit softer. And that's gonna provide a little bit of a cushion. Um, and, and that's what I'm trying to say is like, like I, when, I, when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about doing it out on location. You know, like you saw where I did it. I, I, we were doing it on, on the alley in the back, you know, so the ground was gonna be hard. And I told him, I said, I don't want you guys doing leaps. And, you know, they said, well, we're gonna do leaps. And it's like, okay, you know, I mean, as long as I, you know, like I was the one discouraging them, if they still wanna do it, I'm probably gonna let them do it. Um, when we were outside, did I use a TV? No, no, I just, uh, I, I just looked at the back back of the camera and uh, and you know sometimes I didn't even show them. I just said you know it's fine. Um, so no, not using the chair mats either. No mats exactly. You know, and that's a thing. Like you know, like I said, I I really like you saw that third one. That's kind of like what I wanted them to do was things like that where they they didn't have to like do any leaps, but and they only did a couple. But you know sometimes. That's what they do. Um, so Ying Chen is asking about the 70 to 200. I, I think the 70 to 200 is an essential lens. To me, the two lenses that are essential to doing dance photography is a 2470 and a 70 to 200. I have other lenses as well, like an 85. Um, but those are the those are my two workhorses. Um, and so I yeah yeah so 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 that's your next step, Ying Chen is. Is in and I use I use a seventy to two hundred for my senior portraits as well. I I use that mostly for like when I'm shooting senior portraits, ninety to ninety five percent or maybe even more of my images are using the seventy to two hundred. Okay, uh, Ron says seems like final edits really rely on overlays. Any thoughts on where we could find some online? As we won't uh, have any saved up. You know, maybe I'll have them ready for you guys uh, in January or so. You know. Um, um, that's it. I, I, I don't really know of any other color powder places, any, any, anyone else that sells, sells these overlays. And that's why I want to get mine out because, you know, I want to be the first one really out there doing that. And, and mine are going to be good. So you can be trustworthy on that. Is the thin board slippery? Uh, there, there's two surfaces on it, like, like with the ones that I use and one is a little bit slick and the other one is really rough. You know, and so you can use the rough side. I don't know that the that the other side is really all that slippery as well. You know, you, you can just go to Home Depot and you'll see there's a bunch of them that they have that has like one eighth inch uh, thickness, and um, it, it'll be near where the, the plywood is sold. Um, but I, I just think it's really going to be helpful. Okay, can you describe how you tell them to throw the powder again? And, and Larry, again, it's like it's like I, I everyone is going to be different. When you see my other videos, it really goes into more detail. I, you know, I just didn't want to spend like 40 minutes, you know, just talking about each, each different thing. And I, I didn't even like even go over any editing today. Maybe I'll pull up a video real quick and just kind of scroll through the whole thing so you can just see how I edit it. It'll, it'll be really fast. Um, how do they kick up the powder? It's really, you know, I sweep it up again I'm, on my other video, you know, my full video, you'll see me sweeping it up and how I do it. And I talk to them about where their foot is going to go, because sometimes I think their foot is going one place, but it's actually going another and then they miss it. And it's like, whose fault is that? That's my fault, you know? Um, and uh, um, so I just pick it, pick, get a pile, you know, and once they go through a boom, man, it just creates this explosion. Depends on how well they do it though, because you know, sometimes you tell them to sweep the floor and they just don't really sweep it with their foot as well as because they're not used to doing that and it's new. So somebody like Ann, boom, man, she's a professional. She can adjust. But, you know, if it's a 12 year old girl, she's so focused on technique, it's hard to throw in something new. You're already like talking about throwing in color powder. Now it's like my foot's got to go where, you know, so it's a little bit tough. Okay. Um, 
yeah and there goes thomas showing where all these overlays are i just lost my job um see they aren't great see you got to go with mine okay um so let's see um that's the last of it so let me go ahead and, and pull up a uh an editing one okay let's see i will pull up i guess i'll just pull up this one here like i'm not even sure okay i have to figure out which one it is if it's this one okay so here we go yeah let me get this Oh, this video stuff out of the way. We'll put it right there. That's good. Okay, so now you can see this. This is a 25-minute job. This is where I started. I'm not going to play like play this whole thing. I'm not even going to actually even play it. But well, here, I'll just kind of show you. Like, like this is me talking see about it. You can hear me. Too concerned about how much I'm going over. You know, so so what I'm doing is I'm actually talking about it as I'm doing it each step of the way. And then you can kind of kind of see all the crazy things that I'm doing. And I'm not, you know, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I'm, I'm this great Photoshop guy and this great lightning guy. I'm not, you know, like I have my ways of doing it. I, I have my, my editor that, that's in here and she does like all those crazy layers, you know, and stuff like that. And I do, I do like, here's a few layers. I'm doing one thing and then boosh and then next layers and then boosh. And, and I keep like, like flattening them. Like, and I do it one step at a time. Whereas, you know, if you look at what she's done, she's got like 40 freaking layers going, you know, and I don't know, I can't even keep up with that stuff. But uh, so, so I don't pretend to be like, like great or anything, but you know, I, I just do it my way. You can see me. This is how I create my my overlays right here. You can see me doing it. I'm I'm talking about doing it, man. I'm I'm sharing my secrets right here. Um, and so then we're just adding a little bit more. I'm showing you that I'm saving it. You know, whatever. I'm probably going to change colors. Who knows? Yep, there I am changing colors. <laughs> All my secrets right here. Okay, so you can see you know how it looks there you know, compared to how it looked there, you know, this one, I, I, I don't know, I actually took this and created an overlay is what I did, instead of adding an overlay to it. So, you know, and I've got like about four of these five of these, you know, that, that I'll be adding, you know, to the website blog, so you can see how I edit different ones in different ways. So, um, so there you go. Let's see, do we have any other final questions? Um, if you have any final questions, you know, please let me know now. Um, but that kind of like, like, is it? And then, you know, just like I said, with marketing, um, the, the best marketing I have is letting these parents take these pictures and these videos. I guarantee you, they, I get all these calls and it's like, Hey, you want to do it? You know, it's like, ah, did you hear about me? It's like, I saw a friend posted something. It's like, I get that all the time, all the time, you know, um, you know, and I, and I just constantly, you know, put my stuff out on Instagram and, you know, but you see the thing about Instagram and Facebook is that you're, you're only getting out to your own circles, you know, like these people already know what you're doing. You know, it's important to get the word out to them, but man, it's the other ones where you're really able to expand, you know, so I, I just uh, can't encourage you, um, you know, more you know, just, just to do that. So let's see. And I gave you my pricing and I think that's it. So thank you very much for being a part of today's uh, webinar. Um, I'll be getting the word out about like, like, like when it's up on the um, educational uh, page on the potedupphoto.com website. And, uh, you know, this will be going out onto the, the potted up photo Facebook group, of course. So thank you very much. We'll catch you guys next time.